Here we are guys and welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year. It's 2024. I am out on the bass. It's 45 mile an hour winds again. It's unbelievable guys. Welcome back. Happy New Year. I am on it. Down the local estuary today. And it's a, there's a big surf out there. I've got some nice peeler crab and I've got a, some nice frozen bait on the, to the other rod. Yes, I don't know about you, but I've had enough of sitting indoors. I've had enough drink, I've had enough food. I hope you didn't drink too much and I hope you're, uh, you know, you're happy up here and had a really happy Christmas and all healthy and everything. So yes, welcome back. I'm down here on my own. I'm out with Wingman, I think it's Friday. It's, Jan it's January the 3rd, 2024. Let's go fishing, guys. So guys, girls, listen up. Let's talk about winter bass fishing, shall we? Because I know I know what I'm doing when it comes to bass fishing all year round, all right? A lot of anglers just think there's a period from there to there in the middle of the year and by October it's all over and that's it. You know, and a lot of the lure guys pack their stuff away like in November. Um, but but the, the bass anglers that are in the know know completely different, okay? So, just a little bit of background about myself. Um, I did pretty much this, a circuit of three beaches, basically, blinkered for about 10 years or more with a, with a guy I used to go fishing years ago in the 90s, Les, absolute diamond of a bloke, love him to bits. Still speak with him now, but we don't fish together anymore. Anyway, I mean, I've, I followed him around religiously. Week in, week out, he'd pick me up or I'd pick him up when we'd go to a big brie or, or wherever, or, you know, it was, it was either this beach, that beach, or this beach, right? And, it didn't matter what the weather was, right? We still went. And of course, over the years, I started to realize what was going on. And when I say realize, um, there was a pattern forming. Uh, so when we went out and say, like when it was in the winter, December, January, and you get a nine to 11 degree low that comes in mild, brilliant, right? The best time to go bass fishing in the winter when there's a nice low pressure, and it's windy and raining and it's mild, all right? Because the fish do come on the feed, they respond, they know what's going on, there's more food around, etc., etc. Whereas the opposite side of the scale, what I started to notice was after about, I don't know, probably about five or six years of doing this, week in, week out, it didn't matter if it was minus two, plus 10, we still went. On the other side, on the cool side, right? When it got to below four, so four degrees was about the cutoff point for the bass that would switch on. So when we used to go out when it was like between zero and four degrees, it was rubbish. It was never any good, but we still went, right? And a couple of times it would be stormy, all right? We'd catch a few more, we'd catch a nice one big one or something like that. But I noticed after this, you know, after doing you know, like 10 years of this, the same thing, day, week in, week out, you know, and we just did it. And half the time you're just going through the motions because you're there at the wrong conditions. So this is what this little chat's about. Sorry, it's a bit long and in depth, but yes, below four, the bass start to snore. Above five, they'll come alive, right? And I, I made that up, right? I made that up years ago. Uh, I think I put it in a blog, uh, a, a blog on my website because I had a, I, I used to write for various websites. Yeah. Below floor, bass snore, above five, come alive. Yes, today it's like 10 degrees, it's really windy, really rough, but it's dry. So hopefully I can make a little bit of a video. Put So I'm gonna put a bigger bait out today, a big juicy crab bait. Uh, but the only problem is the river's in full flood. It's like, it's really wide and it's flooding down and there's a lot of fresh water. So it could be a long wait, but yes, I am here. Let's go. By the way, check out my new gloves I've got today in Lidl. 2 dollars baby, in Lidl and, 
can see the cameras, the lights on there. Fur lined, yes, the fur lined. Happy hands, happy bass man. Yes, 299. All right, well, here we are, look. I've got some frozen squid and crab there that's been in the freezer. So having a bit of a clear out. Can you see that? Is that in the middle of the screen? Where are you? Yeah. It's quite difficult when you're uh, filming on your own, especially when there's no light, as you can probably appreciate. So there you go, look, I've got some really nice live peeler. They're all cock crabs and they're actually quite hard. Some of them are really hard still. So that's gonna be quite challenging to use those. But anyway, uh, and there's, there's one that's expired. So that one's just died actually. So I think he'll go on first. Right, so here we are with our, uh, my rig. So I've got a 4.0, uh, it's a really sharp 4.0 on there. I can't, it's, uh, it's a Sea Glow, Sea Glow make, the Sea Glow brand. And it's just starting to rain. No, I've just taken my jacket off. And I've got a fixed um, stinger at the back, really sharp circle hook there with a knotless knot. And the other one I've got loose so I can adjust it. And I kind of like the other way that you can adjust it yourself. I like that this is fixed and it's got a nice angle on it. You know, I, I like that about it. And you have, but you have to sort of wind it down to get it really short. So obviously, because it's fixed, but I do, I do like it. And here comes the rain. Look. So just gonna peel off this, it's very soft. It's just about to peel this one. It was. And you just gently push in the sides and they come off. Hopefully I've got this in the right bit of the camera. I can't really see from here. So then you've got it like that. Nice and soft. And then I'll just start by, I'll just put this on the hook the easy way. The, the, the no-brainer way, you can just go in here. Where are you? In there. Pull it over the top and just whip it on like that. And that is good enough for me. And then later on, I'll add to this and I'm gonna make a bigger bait. But just to start with, this will do. And I'm not gonna over whip it. around that base of that hook and I'm literally just going to be lobbing out here so there's no pressure on the there's no pressure on the bait to you know slide off the hook or anything like that lovely and then what I'll do is I'll just peel that claw what is it with elastic it's just like a magnet isn't it it just sticks to everything so later on I'll just peel that and that will just disguise the hook. So yeah, there's my stinger rig, look. So it's like that at the moment. So it's like that at the moment. And then what I have to do, look, is go round, shorten it. Shorten it. And another time. So it's like that. So you want to get that as close as you can to the bait, but not in the bait. It doesn't need to be in the bait. Right, and I sell these on my website. They're the best seller fishingguidesdevon.co.uk forward slash shop on my website packs of three there's all sorts on there and thank you very much by the way for supporting the rig brand it's made a big difference to my to my christmas it means i can carry on doing what i love which is this making videos for you guys and yes so thank you very much for that so here we are look so this crab is obviously it's a big cock crab and there's a 4-0 and I've taken a leg socket out of the back and pushed it back through the back of the crab so it didn't kill it and come out the other side as you can see and I've just whipped it so the eye of the hook is just there see the eye there in between those two lots of cotton you've got to make sure that that's really secured around those legs otherwise your hook will slip if you when you cast it so yes that's going out on the other rod and that has caught me just as many, if not more bass, than the other method when you're peeling it. 
yeah, it's a really good method and it looks really natural. And what I can do is I can actually put a claw on that hook point so I can just take off a little bit of leg off another crab and just like slide it over there so it just looks like a claw. So yeah, I'm pretty confident. Let's go. So yeah, I've got the real light gear tonight. The VX carp rods, 10 foot, three pound test is all you need. And I've got my faithful Stradic. The other one needs a bit of service. It's the uh, roller bearings not working. So I've got the sidewinder there. I haven't, I haven't rigged that one up yet. So they're, you know, they're basically similar size reels. All you need really. Yes, and I'm using, I'm only using like two ounce coated weights. That's it. Yes, here we go. Here we are all set up and flicked out. And there's a lot of fresh water coming down here. So I reckon I might have a bit of a long wait. But it is roaring out there and I am tucked away. Knowledge is power. Right, so I'm gonna uh, just make up a quick squid and carp bait here. So I've got a nice long rig for my running ledger. Sakuma 60 pound line. Really simple, squid's still a bit frozen. Up through the back. Through the side. Simple stuff. nice demo and by the way who's a, who's the idiot that thinks of all these names for these storms that we've been having you know like storm pier storm hank like yeah i just don't get it all right i'm not going to go too mad on that because i'm going to do add some more now so there's my nice squid bait, and now I've got some nice crab carp. Salted myself, extra salted, extra mature. And I was out on Crusader, Crusader Charters a, about a month ago, and this guy was taking the mickey out of me because I had all this fancy stuff. And he says, what's this, hors d'oeuvres? You giving them hors d'oeuvres, mate? Which everybody found very, very funny, including me, actually, it was a good one. And I said, yeah, mate, a bit of the old crab pate. There you go. That's it. And if you wanted to, you could whip the, you could put the head on the, on the hook, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Nicely whipped. Nice big bait for a big bass or a big cod. Yes. And then stinger in the back. And I can hear the waves lapping behind me now, so it's, it's rock and roll time. There you go, guys. One squid carto. Just one squid carto. Give it to me. Yes, the cart. Just had my first bite there on the right hand rod. I'm not putting my light on. I've just got the, literally the flash on the camera, on the phone here going. That the light is your worst enemy. So any sort of torch, any sort of light you put over out on the pool or wherever you're fishing, and you ain't gonna catch. Especially if it's shallow. I cannot stress enough the point about light pollution. I mean, it's really difficult for me to make this video tonight because I'm putting light, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a small amount, it's still light that's going out, you know, even though I'm facing the wrong way. So most lights have got this red light feature on them these days. So I'm using that down tonight and it's just enough to see where you're going and not trip over anything. But if you use a light down here, if there's headlights going around everywhere on any estuary, 
you will not catch. So if you're next to the guys that have got all the nice big lights on, walk away. Right, so here we go. I've just had a bite on that rod, on the left-hand rod, the peeled crab. You wouldn't actually know it. It's actually got quite a lot of sand on it because I've just dragged it obviously back through the sand. But there's not a lot of damage been done to that bait at all. So I'm just going to put some more crab on it now. So there's the point that's still showing. And it's quite, you know, it's a nice bait. But what I'm going to do is, I've got a peeled crab here. So I'm going to add to that. Because that's still quite contained in there. I haven't actually burst the crab. Come on string, be kind. It's new, your new, new string, new year. Right. So all I'm going to do with this fella is put it on the back here. All right, so I'm going to build that bait up. So I'm going to put it right there. And when I've put it on, obviously it will uh, change shape. Come on, my beauty. So that's a nice bit of scent in there on the underside. And that bait's just grown, hasn't it? So it's just grown another half a big crab on there. Now we're talking proper bass bait. You don't have to over whip it because it's already leaking out. And that is it. The hook's still proud. That is a nice bait. Very, very nice. String on there, there you go. That's a nice bait for a big bass. So let's go and get one. First bass of the year, maybe. Right, so there's Mr. Mr. Crab come back in. He's looking a bit sorry for himself there, isn't he? So he's had, I've had a couple of bites on that. Really good bites and it's chipped away here. Right, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste that crab because it still looks like a crab on the bottom and that's what you're trying to achieve, a, a peeler crab or one that's just died or something, you know? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the other half of that crab. I'm just gonna smack that on there, baby. And I'm just gonna literally whip that onto the top of his head. And all of a sudden now I've got a lot more scent coming out of it. And it still looks natural-ish. I think I just heard my rod rest clatter. I might have a fish on the other rod. Sorry. So anyway, there you go. So I'm just putting that on the top. And now, this looks like a crab again, doesn't it? Yes, the crab. Right, what's happening with this other rod? Here we go, I just had two really big hits then. A, a big, a bigger bass. And I've just come back, just to get the camera just to tell you about it. That's the big peeler crab bait out there. Left hand rod. Come on. It won't be long. Nice fish. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Woohoo! Big bait, big fish. Yes, the bass man. And here we are, guys and girls. 
Happy New Year, Flappy New Year, from me to you. Yes, what a beautiful fish. That's my first fish of the year, guys. Welcome along, all the new subscribers. And I knew I was gonna get a big one there. Hell yes. Oh my gosh. Nice fish. Nice fish. Right, mate. Where's the uh, hook? I bet it's the circle. Here we go. It's the best selling rig on my website and the cheapest. And there's a, there's a circle. Look. Sorry, I'm shaking a bit. Woohoo! Happy New Year. Circle pinned in the corner. Never deep hooked. And look at the bait here. There's the big bait on the big hook. Hell yes. <laughs> Happy New Year, Mr. Bass. Yes, the bass. See you later, mate. Bass Karma right there. Here we are guys, that's about it for me tonight. Very happy new year to you all. I hope you have a lovely Christmas and new year and back to reality, back to work. So yes, thanks for watching the video. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, get involved, share it with your mates on WhatsApp or wherever, Telegram. Thank you very much guys. First bass of the year, and she went back. Bass Karma, yes the Karma. Put it back, you get a bigger one. And yes, listen to what I said about the weather and the temperatures. Very important, yeah? Unfortunately, because I turned my light on and my camera to get the fight, we lost, I lost all the fish in front of me. They just spooked, that was it. So I haven't had a bite now for, I don't know, 40 minutes or something. So yeah, it's all part of the filming, isn't it? But hey, you wanted to see the fight or did you want to just see a fish on the floor? Exactly. So yes, I sacrificed, I sacrificed the, the pool of fish for the fans. Yes, guys, that's it for me. Tight lines, me and Wingman are out on Friday.